Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how the upper ribs move when the thoracic spine goes into flexion or extension. And I'm gonna be doing that today with two oranges and a banana. So one important thing to understand before we go further is remember that during thoracic flexion, we have what's called upsloping. And so the superior vertebra moves anteriorly and superiorly relative to the vertebra below. And then during extension, we have downsloping, where the superior vertebra moves posteriorly and inferiorly relative to the vertebra below. So these two oranges are gonna represent the vertebra. Uh, this one right here is gonna be our superior vertebra. So put an S for superior. This one's gonna be our inferior vertebra. So I'm gonna put an I for inferior. And so the way we're going to look at this is like this. We're looking from the top down. So we have our superior vertebra on top, inferior vertebra on the bottom. And so if we consider thoracic flexion, and over here where my left side is, this is going to be anterior, and back here is going to be posterior. Well, if we have thoracic flexion and we upslope, that means that the superior vertebra, this one, is going to translate superiorly and anteriorly relative to the vertebra below. And the key here that we want to really understand is that uh, anterior movement. Then if we do thoracic extension, we have that downsloping, which is posterior inferior movement. And we really care more about for this, that posterior movement. Okay, so anterior over here, posterior over there. So this is thoracic extension downsloping. This is thoracic flexion upsloping, all right? Now in the thoracic spine, and here we're talking about the upper thoracic spine, we also have our rib. And that rib sits more or less in between those vertebrae like this. And again, I know that this is um, anterior over here and posterior over here, again, because the vertebra exists posteriorly. And remember that the rib curves anteriorly. And so if we're looking top down, this would be the right rib. Now, in the upper thoracic spine, these upper ribs are either going to go into posterior rotation or anterior rotation, depending on whether or not the thoracic spine is extended or flexed. The best way to think about anterior versus posterior rotation of the rib is to imagine or even draw a dot right on the superior surface of that banana. So I'm going to draw a little dot right there. Can we see that? Yes, we can see that. And I'm gonna rotate that rib. All right, I'm gonna take these off for a second. And I'm gonna rotate this rib. If that dot moves anteriorly, remember anterior is over here, posterior is over here. If that dot moves anteriorly, then that is anterior rotation. Notice that dot when I rotated it moved forward anteriorly, right? If that dot moves posteriorly, then it's posterior rotation, okay? We'll take a look at another view of this in just a minute. Now, uh, again, this rib's gonna exist mostly between that inferior vertebra and that superior vertebra, okay? So, when we undergo thoracic flexion, remember, that's upsloping, so this superior vertebra is gonna move anteriorly, okay? Technically, superiorly and anteriorly, but I'm concerned about that anterior motion. So when the superior vertebra moves anteriorly, notice what happens when I do that. It's gonna cause that rib to do a little anterior rotation. Watch that again. Because it's sandwiched in between there, when this superior vertebra moves anteriorly and upsloping, it rotates that rib anteriorly. And that's gonna cause the rib overall to rotate downwards. That's what we would see in thoracic flexion. If I go into extension of the thoracic spine with that downsloping, and I get that posterior translation of the superior vertebra, watch what happens. I move it posteriorly, and now that dot rotates posteriorly. So I have posterior rotation of that rib. And also notice that the rib rotates upward, okay? So thoracic flexion, superior vertebra moves anteriorly, causes anterior rotation, okay? Extension, superior vertebra moves posteriorly, and I get posterior rotation, okay? Now let's take a look at this in another angle. So now in this angle, over here closest to the screen is anterior back here is going to be posterior. So I've still got my inferior vertebra, I've got my superior vertebra and the thoracic spine, and that rib 
that's sandwiched between those. So again, watch what happens if the superior vertebra moves anteriorly, so toward the screen. That's in thoracic flexion. Okay, when it moves forward, we get anterior rotation of that rib, and look what happened. It had an overall downward rotation. So that anterior rotation is gonna cause overall downward rotation of the upper ribs. Okay, if I go into extensions, so let's move this superior vertebra posteriorly. That's gonna trigger that uh, posterior rotation. And notice in posterior rotation, what's the overall rotation of the rib? It's superior rotation. Okay, so in thoracic flexion, you get anterior rotation and overall inferior rotation of the whole rib. And then in extension, you get posterior rotation and overall superior rotation of the rib. 